I'm Nicole Erkin, Research Director for Mad Money, and I'm here with Ross Kenneth Erkin, Personal Finance Editor at The Street, along with Jim Kramer, and we welcome you back to Old Dog, a new blog, where we continue to introduce new and exciting young-oriented apps. Now, Jim, earlier last week, you wrote a post for LinkedIn Influencers. Right where you outline lessons from living in your Ford Fairmont in the late 1970s. Right. And your big tagline was, your place or mine, let's hope it was yours. Because yes. you didn't want people to be knowing that you were, say, living in a car. No, I mean, I think that living in your car still has a connotation now, and it did then. But one of the things that was, uh, I think, a real detriment was, at those days, cars were mechanical. They weren't digital. Right. So there were very few things, whether it be the roll-down windows, or whether it be the AM radio, there were very few conveniences. Now, when you're in a car, they try to make it from the phone to the sound system. They, they try to make it like your home. Right. And, and some of them have been better. Yeah, I mean, right now in the Javits Center, we have the New York International Auto Show going on, and it's just incredible the technology that you'll see there. And companies like Ford and GM are billing themselves very much as. Uh, technology companies, not necessarily automotive ones alone. And you've covered this industry. I've covered this industry. <coughs> I've, I've traveled uh, as far as Abu Dhabi to, to drive on the it's track. It's a hard life to cover autos. It, it's difficult. <laughs> but I, I'm continuously struck by, by the wireless that's available in, in the Audis or in, in this new Bentley Mulsanne or um, just the, the incredible extent to which companies are going to bring your office into your car. Okay. Now, we've so. been talking a lot about apps on Old Dog, New Blog, right. and Ross has covered this a lot. We want to give your 1970s self a little bit of a lesson. How, okay, how you, little maybe spit you Maybe you would have fared a little bit better in <laughs> the right. 2010s plus. So, Ross, you mentioned first, the first app, Car Matey. Car Matey. Car Matey. Car, you, it's a C-A-R-R. -R. M A T E Y, which is uh, yeah, like, like a little bit a of a pirate rogue. Yeah, right. I lost my red beard, so <laughs> I'm I'm working on it. But you know, Nicole and I have memories of wandering uh, in our youth the parking lot looking for our mother's sob. Mostly to park right. after a long day at right. Bloomingdale's or something. Yeah. So <laughs> you know, if you're living in your car, that means that you're homeless if you can't find it. So Car Matey actually allows you to plug in the GPS of your car, saves it for you, and creates this fun treasure map with pirate voices so that after your day of shopping or you know, carousing, you're able to get back to the, the Ford. All family. right, how about if, my, if my, uh, I'm at the ballpark where I always lose my car? It's good for that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Now, Jim, this Great. brings us back to your first lesson that you learned from your car. If you're down and out, you kind of convince yourself that you're not. Right. This kind of an app kind of helps bring you up, what do you think? Well, you think look, I think, that, uh, <laughs> I, I think that the idea that a car is a convenience mm -hmm. as opposed to an obstacle is terrific. Right. I think it's terrific. Now, your second lesson from years of living in your car was never think that you have too many friends. You always right. need them. Yes. But if you can't reach out to a friend you need to find a parking spot you need to stick it out on your get it get it together on your own so another right. one that ross found was parkopedia and parkopedia is great and there are any number of parkopedia. apps it combines the concept of wikipedia with parking so basically <laughs> it's it's a catalog of all the spots that are available well, how do they know? in your vicinity well it's gps oriented and garages themselves will have this function so they can sort of send out signals to you um, and kind of the, the way that cities are going with smart technology and parking meters, um, your app will be able to tell you where to go instead of doing the frustrating Are you circle. telling me that I can find an open space in the street when I'm in Brooklyn trying to park my car? Yes. Depending. It's not, it's not expa so expansive necessarily. So depending on the neighborhood or depending on the city you're in, this will solve your problem. Who would not want that? You right. don't want to Time drive, is money. Exactly. Right. And you don't want to, though, be driving through red lights to speed to a spot. Your third mm -hmm. lesson living in a car was always respect the authorities. Yes. Now, you had a, a little mm -hmm. bit more serious run-ins back in the right. day than maybe driving through a red light. But another one, again, that Ross was weeding through is Trapster. Yeah, and Trapster is great. There are also any number of car apps that are going to indicate speed cameras, red lights, traffic. 
but this one does it in a fun way with a sultry woman voice or a New York cab driver yelling at you or a refined British man um, who's what, telling you, you know, beware of the speed traps that are coming up. But isn't that a Lou? You know, it, <laughs> it depends. <laughs> I, I think that the technology I itself, you know, allows you to kind of avoid and stay within the law. Uh, okay. Avoid, you know, right. breaking the law. So you're and I just, you're a little just more I put that on my dashboard, or what do I do with trap of my PC, my yeah, cell phone? You would put it on your cell phone and Trapster. a lot. Yeah, and a lot of uh, times these days, you actually are able to upload what's in your phone to your dashboard. So smart. I love that. Yeah, yeah. I love Trapster. So <laughs> we thought that these three apps would be very useful tools if your 1970s self had been in the present day. But you know, you did. I thought that one of your most interesting takeaways was enjoy your freedom while you can. Right. Some of your experiences living in your car, even though you didn't have the luxury of these apps, were some of your most treasured. Well, I mean, look, when you, know, when you got nothing, you got nothing to lose. And one of the great things is that you would always try to figure out, OK, it's the weekend. I don't have to work. Where should I go? You're untethered. Hmm. To be untethered and to not worry about your lawn, not worry you have to clean up your house, not, mm -hmm. not have to spend a lot of time trying to figure out what you should, how to make your house better. You don't go to Home Depot when you live in your car. I just drive up the Pacific Coast Highway, which is a beautiful ride. Done it a million times. Right. Well, I so, want these. Yeah. I want Trapster. I want Parkopedia. And I want a hoi me, a car me. Car me <laughs> Those are the three. And Jim's last lesson in his years of living in a car was no when to finish, no when to end it. So we're going to end the video right there. Check back for more. Old dog, new blog. I'm Nicole Erkin, research director for Mad Money, Ross Kenneth Erkin, personal finance editor, and the one and only Jim Kramer. Check back.